So in the final part of this chapter, you will learn how to take the new model files you've trained and use them over on glitch.com, updating your previously completed code to use the retrained model. Let's get started. First, if you've not done so already, unzip the files for the model you trained and downloaded in the previous section. You should see the following files contained within its various folders. If for some reason you had trouble generating these new files, you can go to the URL shown to grab the ones that I made in the prior session. Essentially, there should be the vocab and labels text files along with the standard model.json and binary files for the model itself, so four files in total. Now you'll need to place the model.json and bin files that were generated on a web server so you can access them via a web page. You could use any web server or CDN to do this, but if you're going to be using glitch.com, you need to follow the instructions on the following slides to ensure it works correctly. For this project, remix a copy of your completed work in comment spam detection website, or if you had trouble making that, remix a copy of my one shown here. Now head to the special assets folder on the left panel and click on the button that says upload an asset near the top of the page that opens. Now do not drag the files to upload. You must use the button as Glitch by default places files with certain extensions in different folders. By using the button, it forces the files to be uploaded to the same folder. Okay, so proceed to upload the two model files to the assets folder as shown. You should then see the two files uploaded on the right as shown in this diagram. One thing to note here is that if your operating system by default shows custom files to choose from for the upload for certain file extensions only, you might not be able to select your JSON and binary files. Be sure to select all files from the dropdown as shown to make your local binary and JSON files visible so that you can upload them to Glitch. Once uploaded, click on the model.json file and it will open up a modal window where you can copy the resulting URL for this file. Go ahead and click copy URL button highlighted on this slide. Next, head over to your script.js file and update the model underscore JSON underscore URL constant with the URL that you just copied, so it loads your newly trained model instead of the old one. At this point, the last step is to generate a new dictionary.js file. To do that, head on over to the URL shown on this slide and use the web app hosted there to generate a new dictionary.js by uploading your vocab.txt file to it and then saving the resulting file it offers for download. Feel free to view the source to see how it transforms the text file to the required JavaScript format if you're curious, using the link to view the project source as shown. Then, just like before, upload the dictionary.js file to the Glitch Assets folder and click on it to copy its resulting URL. Finally, open up script.js one more time and find the import for dictionary.js and replace it with the URL that you just copied for the new dictionary.js file that you just uploaded. Great! You've now updated the demo to use your retrain model files. Let's try out the new model to see how it fares with some of the sentences that you had trouble with before and see if it learned anything new. Sure enough, if you work through the previous edge cases discovered, comments that are marked as spam that were actually genuine and now let through just fine. And in a similar fashion, comments that were previously let through but were actually spam are now marked as spam correctly. Seems to be working great. Feel free to try some variations too if you wish. It should be able to generalize its knowledge of the new sentences it's learned about, even if you use slightly different words that essentially mean the same thing. Of course, if you really try to break this new model, you will be able to, and it will come down to gathering even more training data to have the best chance of capturing more unique variations for the common situations you're likely to encounter online. After all, this model was trained on only around 1,500 sentences, and many production systems would use far more than that, maybe hundreds of thousands of examples or more. So congratulations, you've managed to retrain a spam detection model to update itself to the work for the edge cases you found and deployed those changes to the browser with TensorFlow.js for a real world application. As mentioned before, this same model could be used for other text classification tasks too if you have suitable training data. So get creative and show the world what you can now do. In the next chapter, you'll get a tour of some of the more advanced machine learning models that exist and resources you can use to go even deeper into the world of machine learning after this introductory course. See you there.